I just want to set um, our goals for this time together. Um, I uh, first want to say that um, the advisory committee is not a committee that meets regularly. Uh, we meet um, when needed. And so we've met just a couple of times this uh, past year. Um, we, we met to um, uh, set up um, the circle practice in the fall and we, um, we considered uh, what we would be discussing, which was um, to, to discuss the uh, um, feelings that, that the membership had about um, what they were experiencing being on online rather than in person. And so that was a great conversation. Um, uh, and we were able to get a lot of feedback from, uh, from our membership. And so for this um, um, coming year, um, one of the things that has um, uh, really come to the fore is that we need to uh, reconsider the role of the committee um, or the, the, the Committee on Religious Education in Public Life and Global Community. Um, and so by extension, um, that, that's the first goal is to reconsider that the role of that committee and by extension, the role of the board in making statements, right? Because in the past, um, this committee has drafted um, any public statements that um, the uh, REA has issued. Um, so those are, those are the goals that we have for our time together. I want to um, give a moment to my colleague, Christine, to also introduce herself um, and any other, anything else that you want to add about uh, these goals that we have set for our, our time together. Thank you, Patricia. I'm Christine Hong. I am your outgoing Jedi officer. So a little bit of history around the work of this committee. Um, this committee in 2020 decided to revise its role in relationship to the membership of the REA and the board. And one of the primary roles that it considered for itself and that it took on was to write statements that come through the, mem that for which a request comes through the membership or the steering committee or from board members themselves. And so they wrote a policy in 2020 and developed that about a protocol on what a statement actually is, how it can be made, who can make it and how it is requested, how it is followed up on. So that process really began very recently. Um, and the statements that the board made since that policy was approved and used was a statement on Black Lives Matter and George Floyd, a statement on Stop AAPI Hate, and most recently a statement on Israel and Palestine. So there was one of the, the things that makes this tricky is that when a statement is made according to the policy that we have, and Pat uh, Patricia can share those documents with us in the chat, is that it has to be made by consensus. So the board has to sign off on any such statements that are requested, written, drafted by this committee, then shuttled back and forth till it is a consensus vote from everyone on the board. The reason why this is coming up and the advisory committee this year is that the Committee on Religious Education in Public Life and Global Community was given a draft or given um, an opportunity to write a draft on Israel and Palestine, wrote one, we engaged key members of our membership around that statement. And you can imagine as with any statement that is made on Israel and Palestine, it was a very tricky process and it caused conflict immediately. So, and I don't know if, about your institutions and how you have all navigated that, but um, it, I think there was a lot of wounding that happened in the process of this. So the committee declined to make the statement. Essentially, this is what happened. The board then had to take on the role of deciding whether or not they wanted to make a statement and how they wanted to do it. If you look at the policy, you will see that our definition of statement is rather broad. It is not just a written or verbal statement, but can happen through educational work. The so part of what the board decided to do was to host a 
circle process on RE and violent times and also to come here to the advisory board to gain some insight from you all about whether or not the REA should be making statements at all. As you know, I'm just gonna be very blunt, issues in the Middle East, specifically around Israel and Palestine, tend to be ish portal issues, tend to be statements for which people feel that they have to stand strongly on one side or another side. And um, it became sort of the catalyst point of asking that question of, do we even wanna write statements anymore? So part of our work here today is to consider that question. If that's the deeper ongoing question. The question that is an action-oriented question towards that is, and if we are, then what is the role of this committee in doing that work? Should it cease to do this on behalf of the board? Should it um, function in a different way to meet the needs of our membership during turbulent times? Um, if it if it doesn't make statements, what else can this committee do to meet the needs of the membership during turbulent times? So this is sort of where we are. It's a question that the board has wrestled with really carefully and deeply over this last year. And it's really taken um, a lot of energy and time to navigate those conversations through Circle. And the members of the board that are here can attest to some of that and speak to that as well. I can take any questions about the history behind some of this now or later, if you have any. Mary? This is not a question so much as a comment to note that it's only fairly recently that REA made public statements. Like if you look at that webpage, you'll see that that's really a fairly recent um, thing. Yeah, the oldest, thank you, Mary. Um, the oldest statement on that um, list is um, from 2015, a statement on the paralyzing effects of disimagination. So one of the questions, uh, just to be transparent, that continues to come up as requests for statements come from the membership or that they come out of the steering committee or the board, is that who gets to decide and how do we decide what state, how do we decide which issues, which conflicts, which crises receive a statement in response? So the way that the committee has navigated that is to say, that if a request comes through and the board can reach a consensus on the statement that is written through the committee, then a statement will be issued. And in the case of Israel and Palestine and the aggression in Gaza, that was not a consensus that was reached. The consensus that was reached was that we can't say anything about it. Any other questions? Cheryl. Thank, thanks, Christine. Does the committee see uh, the role of the REA in religious education as related to making statements? That's a question that they're wrestling with. I think that's the heart of it. Are we an organization that's willing to do that? Is that our role at all? There are peer organizations and guilds that do make statements like the AAR. So part of, um, but here's my question. Here's my question as the person that thinks about this through a Jedi lens. When we decide to make statements about some things and not others, what is the real answer behind why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think around the issue of Israel and Palestine and the aggression in Gaza, for many people, it comes down to the level of personal risk. 
I'm just going to be very clear about that. So I feel that, um, yeah, I think if it's, and maybe you've seen your institutions also wrestle with that same question. We have seen the encampments on many of our campuses. It is something that we also wrestled with this year. And to be also transparent, the request, there, there were requests coming from the membership and questions about why a statement was not made. Many. So I, I, I think, and my question, and maybe I'm not being specific mm -hmm. enough. So that's helpful that you said that, Christine. My question is, do we define making statements as religious education? Yes. As our role. Yeah, it as is. As so the reason we exist. And if we do, then it it seems that we would be making statements regularly or we would construct guidelines on things for which we will not make statements, which are not in important enough or worth our investment to do so. So I guess I'm 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 thinking that if our reason for existence is religious education, it sounds like this would be a normal part of our functioning. The question is more about how we do that and the kinds of guidelines we devise to do that as we feel needed at the time. And I think a good and response response to ahead, yeah, yeah. your questions would be the actual policy. So it is all in there. And uh, Patricia, I don't think that everyone received it. People may have joined later. So if you could reshare those documents in of the course. chat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that also answers fine your question as well, to whom are the statements addressed and for what? And you'll see that this policy was actually recently updated based on the many circle process conversations the board had. But it's not finished in terms of its revision. It can be revised again based on what the membership decides. Nick. Helpful because I'm sorry, and I'll I'll zip it. <laughs> That's helpful because I have seen statements coming out from other or organizations and wondered um, when I didn't see things. So thank you. Yes. Nick. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm relatively new to deeper involvement in the REA. Um, for this committee and kind of a broader question for this committee is the only thing this committee does, not only, but is, is what this committee is designed for to advise on statements specifically or for any other advisement? Are you talking about the the committee on public life and global community, or this committee, the advisory committee? The advisory committee. This committee specifically. Oh, oh, this committee, the advisory council, advises the board on all issues that pertain to the life of the membership or to the life of the organization. But it's often issues like this that are sought ad advice is sought for. That's helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mary. Um, I have a whole bunch of feelings about all of this. I just want to say that up front. Mm -hmm. And I think the strongest feeling has to do with the um, uh, anguish it's caused <laughs> within mm -hmm. our staff, right? And the the um, microaggressions and everything else that flew around it. And I'm wondering if, and I will also note, having been networking coordinator for a long time, that when we published statements, nobody paid attention to them. I think even people in the organization rarely paid much attention to them. So I'm not entirely a fan of making statements, but I am interested in when um, it becomes clear in the organization that there are deeply held, anguished feelings that are quite divisive, right? Um, some of which arose around race, earlier, some of which, right, all that kind of stuff. 
how do we find a way to bring the resources of the different people scattered across our networks into a place where we could actually engage directly? Because I fear um, that statements or some of these other things become a way to just say, oh, well, we did this and whatever, rather than what do we know as religious educators in our very specific place that we could bring into a conversation that might help us, not publicly, but like within the organization. And I guess I personally would urge us away from statements, but more towards engaging in those very difficult conversations. It's what I loved about the stuff you were doing as Jedi, Christine. It's the stuff I loved about the circle practice. And I wish we could figure out how to, do more of that. Yeah, thank you, Mary. Absolutely. Um, and thank you for your acknowledgement of how this has really worn on us as staff. But um, yeah, it's been a really, it's around this issue. It has been a very tough time. Um, Vaughn and then Annie. Thank you. Um, it seems to me that, that one of the ways that uh, REA can contribute to these conversations is to talk about process uh, instead of the content. Um, instead of dealing with a specific statement about the, the issue, how can people talk about it? How can you help your people uh, have conversations that, that are life-giving instead of uh, so contentious about things? That's my thought. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. And I think that um, what we experienced yesterday in the session on Ari and Violent Times helps us navigate that. Patricia, uh, before I call on Annie, do you want to get in? Uh, no, I just wanted to um, uh, make you aware that Barbara uh, has also been um, raising her hand to, to get oh, in sorry. line. I'm sorry. I can't see everybody on the yeah. screen. <laughs> sorry about that, Barbara. Annie and then Barbara. I was actually going to say something very similar to what Vaughn said. And I'm wondering if we also need to think about what a statement is um, and reimagining what a statement is. So it isn't, I'm just reminding remembering lots of 2020 statements from anything from everybody that I've ever <laughs> bought anything from <laughs> that was like, you know, we're not racist, buy our stuff, right? Like, and, and I'm just thinking if we could think about a statement being and including, which many of, which many of these do, what does this look like as religious educators, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I could also imagine a statement that begins, this was a hard statement to write because we disagree. Now let's talk about that, right? That it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily and probably shouldn't be, here is where we stand as an organization because I imagine that that's not true about 99% of things, right? Um, but can we think about statements that 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 have a little bit more depth and think about what they ought to do um, beyond taking a particular stand. Um, like I said, I kind of quickly went through them and many of them talk about, this is what we're doing. <laughs> this is what you can do. This is how this relates to religious education. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the hope, Barbara. Uh, throughout much of this conference, I have been reminded of Paula Freire's comment, education is political. Mm -hmm. And I cannot, I guess, fathom, fathom, fathom not commenting on political things because education is political. And for us to be silent, to me, suggests that we are um, in agreement with the marginalization perhaps. To Annie's point, we don't have to agree. And we're just commenting on our observation and ways we can address it or integrate it into religious practices if it calls for it, depending on what the, the issue is. But to be silent and not say something to me is problematic. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you, Annie. I do. Um, I think the the statement that they did put out on Israel and Palestine, I think says something about them not being able to make a statement or like a stand mm -hmm. because they disagree. 
Um, because they, made they a couldn't stand. agree. Yeah. Is it what? They made a stand. That's their stand. They made yeah, a stand. That's, yeah, that's their stand is that they, they couldn't agree and they couldn't make a statement about one thing or another. And I think, I think more than that, when we think of when we think of what happened across the country and how people, to your point, the political nature of it, it says more than we just disagree. It implies we agree with Israel. Yeah. Yeah. So I think my my work was to respond to that decision by saying clearly that yes, like a non-statement is still a statement. And those of us who have met, have had statements made about us and our lives, et cetera, can read between the lines pretty well. So um, yeah, but I, I think one of the, the ways in which we've pushed back has also been to say, and why are we addressing this now? Like, why is it an issue for this issue? Why is this issue divisive? Why is this statement unable to be made? What is it about this issue? What is it about these people who are also part of our membership? Um, and I think that's the question that's hard. It goes back to like, it goes back to the question of why are we reluctant to talk about which statements get made and which don't? Because I, I do think there's been some reluctance around that, right? Like to be honest about it. Mm -hmm. um, I wanna toss it back over to Patricia because we do have a process for gathering your thoughts and documenting them for the board to receive in the fall. So they can continue to think about this work and especially about the role of this, uh, not this committee, but the Committee on Public Life and Global Community, whose central role it is, is to pick up this work on behalf of the board. Um, and I think another question is, is it even fair to ask a committee to do something like that? Mm -hmm. So here, uh, I'm just gonna hand it over and we're gonna enter that process of thinking through all of these questions. Thank you, Christine. Um, again, I just want to um, thank you so much for uh, uh, facilitating this, but really how we got to where we are now um, um, in regards to this committee. And so I just want to, um, point you all again to the documents that are um, in the chat. Um, there is a description of the responsibilities of the committee as they were drafted in January of 2020. Um, if you have recommendations for um, updating those, that could be part of the conversation that we um, have uh, in, in the following 30 minutes. So um, for the next 30 minutes, um, we want to work in small groups um, of four people um, and do a circle process um, where we, um, you know, take a look at these, these documents. Um, I'll, I'll ask you all to follow um, the circle process um, guidelines that have been shared throughout this conference, which is, um, you know, first to, to, to listen um, to each other um, and to, um, to speak from your own, your, your own experience, your own story, right? Um, and so we, we, will, we will do that. Um, I ask that you also, you know, spend maybe the first five minutes of the um, small group gathering to introduce yourselves um, and, um, and then go into the, um, you know, reviewing of the documents and, um, and, uh, um, and, and into the, the circle process. So if one, if you can, um, uh, you know, assign one person to take notes um, because we will come back to the larger group and share recommendations. Um, so what we would like to do for this time, the, the, the centering questions, um, I will put those in the chat and, and they are as follows. 
Um, how would a religious education um, committee on public life and global uh, community serve the REA membership best? And what are the ways that they could feasibly support members as they teach and work during turbulent times? Right, so I think um, with, with those questions, just thinking of, of how this committee can move forward. Um, and in that is, you know, implicit this, this um, the, the, the issue that we have been raising, is this committee, a, um, is the REA a statement uh, making body? And if so, is this committee responsible for uh, drafting um, those statements? I think we can spend maybe um, uh, 20 minutes um, just hearing back from, from groups. Um, I know that, that my group wrote down some um, bullet points um, and, and those could be um, shared um, either in the chat or uh, we could send them to, um, uh, you, could, you could send them to maybe Lakeisha who will then uh, put them together um, to send off to the board for, um, you know, gathering all those suggestions and recommendations. So um, hey, what, what groups would like to share back um, the conversations that you had in your, in your groups, any highlights that you want to offer up to the larger group? So to summarize, mostly we recognize that this can be overwhelming for a committee for many different reasons. And then really talked about, um, how the community committee could see itself as curators, um, recognizing that you know they may feel we might not have the expertise, for example, to, to focus on this particular um, thing, but there are others in the guild that do, and this, then it's at that moment that you send out invitations for, you know, for for help or for particular guidance, whether it's curating um, resources that we may already have um, or, or bringing forth a conversation that has been posted um, and just really drawn to the part of the policy that talks about that the statement can include, but is not limited to the written word, right? Um, I just really love that, that it's, this could be part of, <laughs> Um, but in some cases, it may be a video, it may be a conversation. Um, and overall, we felt that in a time when um, intellectuals and expertise are not only not listened to, but are violently fought against, um, this is not the time for intellectuals and experts to be silent. Um, I personally am brokenhearted that universities have, have said as a policy that they won't make statements about anything that doesn't have to do with the university. Um, I think that's the wrong direction to go. Um, and I think the group agreed. So that's our summary. I just want to echo that our group was thinking about curating resources and the difference between that and making a statement, which tends to even though you could make statements, as we said earlier, that could be more, we disagree about this, or here are the landscape of our state, you know, or of our thoughts. A statement tends to be looking for a monovision, and it may just not be the right form for this. And so not being silent, but figuring out a way to, when a request like this comes forward, gather, gather an impromptu group who can curate resources and put them out um, that would help people to navigate how to deal with this educationally was kind of one of the directions that we were going. Um, and yeah, there were questions about committees and workload and unpaid labor and volunteer labor and how that impacts the staff and the staff getting isolated <laughs> in this process. Um, and some thoughts about, you know, how do we use the resources we have in a structure that's efficient that doesn't unfairly burden the staff? Um, so those are in our notes. I don't know if my group members want to say other things, but the word curate was a word that we used a lot and I hear it in Annie too. And I think there's something about that pulling together expertise and offering a response um, that's not being silent, but also not making a statement that doesn't get read 
and causes so much damage internally to try to produce it as well as so much time to try to produce it. You know, I'm thinking about the thing about um, education in this area is ignite, curate practice. And I wonder, I mean, some of the ways in which we've thought about statements in the past was partly because we wanted to ignite interest in something, or we wanted to say, you have to pay attention to this, this matters. And I wonder if, I, I've already said I'm not necessarily a huge fan of statements. I am, however, I, I'm with Barbara, education is political always which is one of the things she said strongly in our group. And I agree with that. And the question is, how do we embody that um, in a way that um, ignites curiosity, curates useful materials around them, and maybe share some good practices, which for me goes back to the notion of what are restorative circles about, right? How do we actually say, okay, it's clear there's a wound in our organization right now. It's bleeding. How do we tend towards healing with it, not put a bandaid on it, not ignore it. What does it help us? I mean, we're religious educators. What, what do we, what resources do we bring to that wound and how do we think about healing and wholeness? Yeah, I think uh, what Catherine and Mary have just said was, was implicit in some of our discussion as well. And the, the, sense of being religious educators and trying to um, practice it, adopt practices as an association or continue practices that have been well begun by Christine and others uh, through through the Jedi work and uh, acknowledging as Mary just said the woundedness and and that any of these practices are difficult in a situation of woundedness and of of strong differences. Um, so, so knowing that, but continuing to try uh, to practice things like the circles of dialogue um, and the resource sharing and uh, whatever ways are possible to, um, to model uh, what we hope uh, will be areas that, that we are pursuing in our own context to model those as an association. So um, recognizing that we're, um, we're in different social locations. I mean, I'm, I'm in a very comparatively, I think, isolated social location relative to the kinds of pain, both that um, people in our association have suffered and certainly that people in uh, Gaza uh, have suffered. So, um, so I'm conscious of my distance from so much of this pain, but, um, but I can learn and can be engaged in, in to a degree anyway and i'm grateful to the association for making that possible so um but especially want to affirm the efforts of the staff to to continue through these really difficult circumstances so thanks thank you all for your comments um i'm going to include my email in the chat um, if there are notes that you want to send me so that I can compile those. Um, I know that um, Christine has been taking notes of um, what we've shared here, um, but if there's, if, if, um, if there's more that you want to share um, uh, beyond this time together, um, you can send those to me and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to uh, get those to the board. Any other um, comments, um, highlights that you'd like to share from your discussions? I wanna thank you all for this important work of um, rethinking um, what this committee, the Committee on Religious Education in Public Life and Global Community um, uh, could do and how it could best serve the needs of the Religious Education Association. Um, I want to uh, remind you all uh, again that uh, being a part of this meeting um, then um, uh, you are a part of the advisory committee, and we do have um, work uh, a, a, as part of that committee um, coming fo uh, forward. So um, we have done, um, Christine has done an amazing job of compiling uh, um, a code of conduct, um, and uh, we have a code of ethics that is still in the works and um, pending. So that is a uh, work that the advisory committee will be 
um, called upon to contribute to in the uh, coming weeks and months um, uh, as we continue to do the work of the advisory committee. Um, any other thoughts, Christine? No, I think these are difficult, but also exciting and transformative times, opportunity, opportunity week. Yes, let's to do good work together. So thank you so much. And um, I will see you as an advisory council member next year. Thank you all for your time and your commitment to this committee. Thank you all.